What about uh, outside uh, Denmark, Africa? Do you ever get a chance to? You say that you you're, you you've got parents that come from uh, Rwanda. Yeah. Uh, but you were born here. Mm. Have you ever get a chance to go to Africa and then play there? Even though it's two years you just started. No, actually not. Um, I have. Uh, I've only been in Africa twice, and uh, I never vis—I never been in Rwanda actually. Um, it was actually my plan to go this year, but then Corona came. But uh, um, I've—I uh, haven't—I haven't played in Africa, but I really want to, and perhaps I want to go to uh, Nigeria one day. Why and Nigeria? What? Why Nigeria? It's because uh, it's uh, it's like you can say the birth of Afrobeat. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's where like most of the hits, Afrobeat hits, come from. So I would like to go there to just get uh, some experience, see how they are partying there, how you know they they kind of get inspired from the Afrobeat music. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. As you're thinking to go to Africa, Nigeria in particular, what do you see the future of Afrobeat or the African music in general? Especially though those you, you you play most. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's I see that that more Af African uh, artists starts to collaborate with U.S. artists and also U.K. artists as well. Uh, and in that sense, it's uh, I think it's the it's the way that they're growing because they enter into a market where where the yeah where the market's bigger. So that's why people people here in Scandinavia starts to listen more to Afrobeat because they come across different uh, areas. So I would say that. Afrobeat is starting, is, is, it will be uh, more collaboration among other big artists. But also, uh, I heard that uh, now kind of Afrobeat is taking, not taking over, but um, are more people, more Euro European people trying to listen more and more mm -hmm. to Afrobeat, especially because of you guys. Uh, kind of bring in into playing much of uh, these songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it's not only us, it's also, I would say, the big artists like, for example, you have Burner Boy, mm -hmm. who really changed, not, I mean, not completely, but he, he, he did something where people start to listen a lot to Afrobeat, because he, he had this, what he's called, uh, how do you say a pizza, a kind of a pizza of Afrobeat, where the dough is the Afrobeat, and then he mixed with different kinds of elements from hip hop, reggae, and jazz. So he mixing all these things, and that's that's actually a good way he's doing it, and that's probably why people really like him, and like his music. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. This uh, uh, the way you explain it. Yeah, and also yeah, I can also add with Beyonce. Mm. She also working with Afrobeat artists as well. Yeah, so she also influenced it a lot to people here in Scandinavia. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Sure. 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 All right. Um, now let's. Uh, when you go out and play, mm -hmm. how you do your selection of music or yeah, yeah. What, how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I start first to to feel the vibe at first, see what mood people are in, or just sitting down, or just relaxing, or they, you know, starting to, you know, getting hyped up. Um, and from there, I s start selecting. Okay, this is perfect for this mood, and this is perfect for that mood. So yeah. But in this case, if they invite you to go, uh, let's say in. Um only uh, party where there is only Scandinavians. Scandinavian. Mm. Do you take a specific music to them, or you just bring your collection of Afrobeat and and you play? Yeah, yeah. yeah I 
I still like a specific, I would say. Because, as I said before, um, Afrobeat is still developing here mm -hmm. in Scandinavia. So, I sometimes pick some few Afrobeats that I know people know. Um, but mainly I go to, for example, classic hip hops or uh, pop or house or something that I know that they will sing along to. Some people they cannot spend a night at work, right? Mm -mm. Because they tend to sleep as a DJ. <laughs> yeah. How can you maintain? I don't know how many hours do can you play uh, uh, along the night and then what do you do to stay at work in order not to stay there? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, I can s I, I mean I can stay all night. It's not a problem. Uh, but I definitely I definitely need some ripple <laughs> if I need to stay up <laughs> for a long time. Um, How many hours you play normally? Uh, at clubs is normally maybe two hours max two to three hours and if it's like let's say birthday weddings it can take six hours plus yeah and uh, and, and sometimes just one hour depending on what event it is yeah okay so at least one is two hours more the legs if you may say yeah it's a, one is, uh, six hours then you will have to yeah spend more energy <laughs> definitely you have a comment a time where you play and the people not dancing and you get frustrated too? Yeah, I, can, I get that sometimes. So what do you, what do, you do in order to get all the frustration? <laughs> Please come on the floor again, come yeah, and dance. Yeah, you know? true. That, that, I mean, then I just pick like hits. Then I just go to a playlist called Go To and just put the, the, like, the most hit song that I, that I know people know. Even though it's old or new, I just I just know that this is a song that people definitely gonna dance to or definitely gonna sing along to. Yeah. In the past, people DJ been using. I mean, people start with cassettes. They come uh, with uh, uh, CDs. Now it's more digital. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you ever, within these two years, do you have a chance to use a CD to play with it? Oh no, but I, I tried vinyl once mm -hmm. when I just started actually. How it is playing vinyl and playing, I mean, because you are more <laughs> familiar with it digital. So how it is playing vinyl and, and playing digital? Well, okay, not to, to cheat or anything, but it was still digital, but it was in a vinyl setting. Okay. Yeah, uh, I never played analogic before. Um, but on a vinyl, it was different because, yeah, I would how to explain it. It's, it's uh, it was it was kind of uh, different also because I had to use another program that I'm not used to. And uh, and yeah, but I haven't tried analogic with CDs or you know these big vinyl players. I haven't okay. like the real old school that I haven't. And when it comes to program, you guys have got a specific program that you go out to play with. And yeah. You use to play. Yeah, this uh, it's called the record box, which is the most used among clubs. And and uh, it's it's also yeah, I don't know, not the cheapest, but it's it's the most growing. Um, um, DJ program, but the most used, or like the other most used, is uh, Serato DJ. I see a lot of DJs actually using that, especially if they're using vinyls. Um, so that's more like a, I would say, them those who have been DJing for a long, long time, using Serato. Yeah. I think I've got one or two more questions before I let you go. Uh, mm -hmm. How we end the, the, the interview? Is there ever come a time where uh, you play a night and it's, you you will say that it, 
I really didn't play that the way I was expecting. Yeah, I've tried that. Yeah, I've tried that many times. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. when that comes, what you? I mean, how you feel and what you? You know, try to do for the next. Uh, I learn. I definitely learn from it, um, and also, yeah, I do that many times because I'm still a beginner. I'm still new, so there's still some things, some uh, like technical things that I'm not so into or experienced in. So, but I learn from that. I also. Like ask my uh, uh, this DJ Taftala, he's uh, what I also call a mentor. I asked him, what what can I do different or what, what how, how can I prevent this from happening? And he he ta he ta teach me sometimes. And also I also look at YouTube or Google it or something like that. Uh, but it's nice to have someone to ask who experienced it. But when it happens, I just go along with it just of course I get mad or like frustrated but I cannot you know stop the music from playing so I just continue yeah what, 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 what are your plans what you ex I mean yeah planning to um, well I want to I want to DJ more in outside Denmark just to see how it is, how the different places are. I want to, as I said, in Nigeria, and also want to DJ in Rwanda as well, or Tanzania, because there's also big in Afrobeat, like the Tanzanian music as well. I really love that. Um, but I also want to DJ in, uh, in the UK. It's it's a very different compared to here, uh, and there's also in US. See how it is there, and. Also, yeah, France, the Netherlands, or perhaps Spain as well. Yeah. All of them have like different music scenes, so I just want to, you know, ex ins um, experience them. That could be cool. How did it, I mean, COVID affect your, uh, your activity, your work? Well, like as a DJ, it, f it f affected yeah. a lot. As a DJ, yes. Yeah, it's, it, it affected a lot because I, I couldn't. Uh, all uh, everything was closed, and I couldn't play anywhere. But then, of course, there was uh, the opportunity to go live on social media, and I did that twice on Instagram and once on uh, Facebook, and that was actually fun. But it, it was also different. But it was fun, and uh, and and yeah, that's that's the only way during Corona we could do like going live or we can also practice in the meantime we have time to do it so um, but financially I wasn't affected because I, I was I was still going at school we get uh, educational aid here and and also I have a student job so that I wasn't affected by that financially so so yeah but I, it was sad <laughs> I miss uh, I miss really a lot playing <laughs> during the time. Does your parents, your family, mm. support your your work? Because in African parents, you've got all they say, no, don't do this, yeah. uh, this kind of work. Not, yeah. They will say it's not yeah. for women. It's, no. They have to say, no, this is not the, the work. At no, all. no, no, no. <laughs> How is yours? <laughs> <laughs> um, my parents are actually very supporting. They they really support me what I'm doing and and they also like ask if I need anything in terms of DJing. For example, my father he recently asked, do you need an amplifier and just like or do you need a microphone? He would he would go for it. So he's he they are really supporting both of them and my mom is always commenting and saying. That's that's good, Gabby. Continue and stuff like that. But they, of course, they know that I'm also studying inside, so that's a good thing. So they know that I'm kind of secure, in a way. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, if people would like to book you, mm -hmm. would like to have you in the parties, whatever, where they can 
contact you? Your Facebook, your Instagram? Yeah, they can contact me on uh, Instagram, Facebook and uh, email as well. Uh, you can find me on Facebook by DJ More Fire. And this way, the same with uh, Instagram, DJ More Fire. And uh, on email, it's uh, booking um, slash djmorefire.com. And, uh, and yeah, this is where you can, uh, you can book me. And you can also book me via my uh, uh, OneTune, actually, as well. OneTune, uh, the management. So yeah, there's many ways to contact me. Thank you very, very much for your time. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate for accepting this interview. Yeah, thank you for having me.